Good morning, Tom. Thanks so much for taking the time to take my call. How's the weather over there in Star City? Good morning, Claire. We're having our first uh, permanent snow of the year here. A little bit warmer than usual, maybe, so the snow's sticky, but it's really nice. Wow. Well, we shared with our, our readers and Facebook fans the fact that we were going to be doing this interview, so I've got some questions that readers submitted that they were hoping you could answer. Um, first of all, just what kind of final training and preparations are you working on at this stage before a launch? We're actually done with the training, we can uh, officially say. So we took our final exams just last week on the Russian side. About every month I've had another series of final exams in one country or another. The U.S. exams ended in September. So right now we're taking a couple of days break. We're going to go into quarantine. We'll be, uh, all we need to do to get certified for flight at that point is to pass our final medical tests, just some simple tests, uh, suit fit checks, get to know our spacecraft. Uh, it's been a last few moments with our families, and uh, that's going to be it. How different overall has the training been from what you did to prepare for 127? The most obvious thing is a two-and-a-half-year flow. So you have more time to get into details, to get into the depth of every subject. Uh, now, having said that, there's a lot more to cover. Uh, we have to be plumbers, electricians, uh, construction engineers or, or workers on the space station. At the same time, running a laboratory, being scientists, um, but implementing the science uh, plan, uh, being the best laboratory assistants we can be. You have robotics, uh, spacewalks, and uh, all, all the subspecialties of a space flight. So it's all in a bundle, and uh, it's very exciting. It's a lot of fun. Of course, we're traveling around the world in different countries. The uh, Russian training program is a little bit different. Uh, interesting to see the, the differences. Uh, but that's, and that's probably the biggest thing is, is studying in, in different countries around the world. Hmm. So will you be taking any Christmas decorations up for the space station? Not on this Soyuz. We had to think ahead. So about six to eight months ago, uh, a couple of spacecraft launched cargo spacecraft that had some personal items in it. And uh, there, uh, I did not uh, pack any of those items, but I understand maybe some of them were packed for us. So we'll see. And there's some up there. I believe there's a little tiny Christmas tree that's been up there for a few years. We'll pull it out. Hmm. And people are curious whether you have any circadian rhythm problems up there in microgravity. Great question. Uh, the circadian shifting starts with launch yeah, because you, then you have to shift from your ground time to the crew time on the space station, which is generally uh, Greenwich Mean Time. While you're up there, there can be some challenges for your body because you see 16 sunrises and sunsets every day. At any point you look out the window, you're not guaranteed as to what you're going to see and if that's in agreement with your own internal circadian rhythm. And uh, so we try to build in the schedule during the day everything we need to inform our bodies what time of day it is. And then it becomes a challenge when a cargo vehicle arrives or another uh, spacecraft, another crew arrives. Then we try to shift to match them so we can all get a work done effectively uh, and at the right point over the Earth. And sometimes that involves a couple of days shift, and then we have to shift back again. So that could be a challenge, but a lot of people work on that on the ground to help us out. Mm. And how about your dreams? Does weightlessness affect your, your dreams or subconscious? Great question. I, you know, on the shuttle, I was so busy that I didn't dream. I remember being an intern and having your, you know, your classic 40-hour day, and then you go to sleep for a night after being on call, and having that kind of a deep sleep where you, uh, a dreamless sleep, I, at least none that I remembered. So I remember closing my eyes and then waking up as if nothing had happened, but having slept through the night. So uh, not yet. I'll let you know, though, on a long-duration flight if I start to dream up there that I remember. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much. Well, we really appreciate your time today, and good luck. Thanks, Claire.